Hello, this is a demonstration of the user interface of Logic World. Uh, we're in a very large world. You're not going to run out of world. So to move around, you use the W, A, and S, D keys. If I quickly tap the space bar, I am now flying. If I move the uh, mouse left and right, I can look you know, left and right, up and down. I can look up and down, pretty standard controls. Now, if I want to go upwards, I hit the space bar. If you hit it too fast, you'll probably just drop back to the ground. If I hit C, I will descend. So now if I want to drop back to the ground, I hit space twice uh, fairly rapidly. And I can even hit C again to crouch to get a little lower. OK, so to place components, you want to put them in your bar here at the bottom. So say I get rid of these, I can drag them out, left click, drag, and left click again to get rid of them. If I want to add something to the bar, I hit tab to bring open the selection menu. I left click, drag it down, put it where I want it. It's a little finicky, left click, and now I have a component down there. If I want to place components, I just, I can uh, scroll with the mouse wheel, or I can hit one, two, three, four to select a component. So let's select a switch. I place the switch by left clicking. I can use Q and E to rotate it. If while I am selecting it, while it's selected, I can continue to move it around. That's uh, mostly it for uh, simple components. Uh, some things to know, if I put down two buttons next to each other, uh, I, if I try to rotate it with Q and E, it won't allow it. I have to grab it to be able to rotate it like kind of through another component. If the switch is not interfered with by anything, I could just use Q and E without selecting it. So that's really helpful to know. Sometimes you do have to hit G for grab to select it before you can do something with it. And it'll highlight in green when you have it selected like that. Okay, so if I place something and then decide I don't like it, I can hit Control Z to undo it. I don't know how many levels of undo you have. I'm just undoing everything I've done in this whole game. There we go. If I undo something like I undo the place from the switch. I change my mind. I can hit Shift Control Z and then redo. By the way, all of these commands, if you go Escape, Settings, Controls, they're all very well explained here. OK, so that brings us to grabbing stuff. Again, G to grab. and I can move it. Now, if I want to just copy it, it's Control G. So it's pretty easy to remember. Um, I think that about covers that. Uh, for simple stuff, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show a circuit board here to show a little more of the placement options. So when I click a circuit board, I can place it either vertical or horizontal. So if I hit T, it'll make it vertical, I mean horizontal. If I hit T again, it'll make it vertical. To place a circuit board, I just drag it out. So I'm dragging up and right to drag this out. Then I left click again. Now when I have it selected, again, green highlighting, I can rotate it along this axis. But if I hit Shift Q and E, I can rotate it along the other axis. Let me resize this with V. V allow me to resize by dragging one of these squares. I can make it bigger or smaller. And now I hit V again to stop resizing. Now I'll hit G again to select. And if I hit Shift Q and E, you should now see it changing size. I mean, uh, changing orientation along the vertical axis. If you look in the upper left, you'll see sort of a cheat sheet there. You'll notice it says Q and E to rotate clockwise and counterclockwise and board rotate up and board rotate down is Shift E and Shift Q. 
if you experiment with it, you should, uh, it should be pretty clear. Another thing to know about placement is some things allow you to place them more precisely. So let's say I place this peg while it's selected there, I can hit control and I can move it around in smaller increments. Some components allow more precise placement like that. Okay. Um, so when you have a circuit board, one of the things you can do is use through pegs. So I'll just show that. And they'll go all the way through the other side. Okay, let's see here. Let's talk about wiring to wire components. Let's, I'll just put two components here on this board. You just drag from one of its pins the black squares to the other one. There are some collision limits and stuff. So that's still showing red. I'll grab it and rotate it and then it shouldn't be a problem. Weird. It's being more picky than I expected. Okay. That is very strange, actually. Oh, maybe, I don't know, maybe it thinks those are two input pins. Let me just uh, pick an inverter and uh, keep stop trying to do that. That doesn't work. I thought you could hook two switches up together, but it was not working. Okay, so you just drag from the black square to the other black square. Note in the components that uh, they often, the tall pin is the input. So well, let me take uh, AND gate, for example, drag it into my bar here. I'll place it. And the long pins there are the inputs. The shorter pin is the output. Uh, while I'm talking about that, I could just go through uh, the components really fast, uh, the, the basic ones. So let's see. I'm just dragging them all to my bar here. It's really kind of finicky sometimes. Oh, I already have that one. All right. I'm just going to show you some of the components, not all of them. The inverter inverts the input to the output. So right now there's no input on the top peg, so it produces an output. That's why it's red. So if it's black, it's zero. If it's red, it's one. So that's like the simplest component. The XOR gate is an exclusive OR gate. It is true if either of the components are true. Uh, inputs are true, but not if both are true. So if I just flip, hook some switches up here, you can see that when they're both true, it's zero. If either of them are true, it is one. And if neither's true, it's zero. The AND gate is going to be true if either of the inputs are, uh, I mean, if both of the inputs are true. Okay, so right now uh, the inputs are zero, so it's false. That input, that input, still false. Both inputs are true, the output is true. Uh, the delay just uh, creates a delay between the input and the output. It's kind of easy to understand here. I'll just drag that, I'll flip that on, and you see a slight delay there. The D-latch saves a, a value when you uh, tell it to. So I'll just put this here. That will be our save button, so to speak. And this will be our input. Okay, so if it's zero and I push this button, it saves the fact it's zero. If this is one and I push this button, I'm enabling the D-latch. I'm telling it to save whatever its current value was at that time. So if I keep holding that down, it'll just keep allowing me to change the value. When I let go, it will no longer allow me to change the value. So if I flip the switch to off, it doesn't affect anything because the enable pin is off. They're, they're basically used in like memory and things like that to save the value. 
Uh, the last one I'll show is the relay. It's very simple. All right. The relay is either <coughs> either allows a signal to flow through or not. So right now it is not enabled. So when I change this, you can see that goes to one, but the output does not go to one. So if I now enable the D-latch by setting the top pin to one, it now allows the signal to flow through. Some of these components have a delay. What the simulator does is it's a series of ticks. Every tick, it updates the circuits, but it doesn't just do everything at once. For example, this inverter uh, takes one tick for the signal to kind of go through. And the same with the XOR, the same with the AND, the inverter, you specify how much of a delay. The relay, the signal will go through with at zero speed. I mean, at zero time will take to go through, but it takes one tick just to enable or disable it. And the D-latch takes like um, a tick to enable it. Okay, uh, I didn't want to go too much more into the components. I wanted to keep this more about the user interface. All right, so I don't know, I, I mentioned in my notes to mention copying. I thought I showed that, but control G and I can copy that. Uh, I showed how to resize. Now, uh, editing components. Now, some components can be edited. So let's say I go to this AND gate and I hit X to edit the component. It now allows me to increase the AND uh, gate by up to four inputs. Some components allow editing, some do not. You can experiment to figure out what can be done. Sometimes you can change the colors. Now I have a yellow button on my button. So it's, it's worth playing around with those. Um, one thing you can do, let's say you've edited a component and you, you like, like it. So I'll take this AND gate here. And if I control middle mouse button, it'll put it into my bar there and save it. So that can be handy. So you don't have to keep, uh, placing down uh, AND gates and, or, you know, copying, uh, copying over and over. Oh, uh, let's see, some other things are helpful to know. You can put down labels. There's sort of flat labels here. So if you go to like a panel label here, these are nice because you can easily run wires over them. If I hit X, I can change what that says, but I can also use uh, tall labels here. And uh, they are the same, except they're tall. So you just, you know, use whatever makes sense. I, I always suggest building on a circuit board. And so let's say I have a circuit board here and let's say I just want, let's say I love this board and I want like eight copies cause it's like memory or something. I could just grab it and move it on top of this board. So I could build up circuit boards on top of other circuit boards, which is handy. And now I can drag the whole thing around, which is handy. All right, let me just show you a couple very simple circuits at, towards the end here. Um, a clock is a really good circuit to know. So what I'm gonna do, I'll just leave this at 10. So it has an input and it has an output. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the output and I'm gonna invert the output and then feed it back into itself. So the output goes to the input and the input goes to the output. So what happens when the uh, output goes to one, it then goes to the inverter and then basically sends a zero signal, then the zero signal propagates back through and it just loops over and over. So every 10 clock ticks, it's looping. You can see it in slow motion. If you hit tilde, you get the console and uh, help 
will give you a bunch of console commands. But in this case, I will type in a command that I know called server, and I pass in a string, and I'm going to pass in a simulation rate. This is basically an indication of how fast it should run. One is probably the slowest it can run at. And so now I think one is probably maybe ticks per second. So right now it's doing one simulation tick for every second. And so basically for 10 seconds, it'll be uh, on and for 10 seconds, it'll be off. Okay, another uh, very basic circuit that is maybe not obvious. In fact, I think it's not obvious. In fact, I'll try to remember how to do it. It's called the one tick pulse. All right. I always have to think about this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a button here. And what I want this thing to do is when I push the button to pulse for exactly one tick. So I'm going to hook the button up to the AND gate and the input into my inverter. And then I'm going to hook the AND gate to the or the output of the inverter in my AND gate. And we'll see if I get the circuit right. So if I push this down, you should see it pulse for one tick. I gotta hold it down long enough to for it to register. There, that was one tick. So that's helpful. The last circuit I'll show will be a what's called a half adder circuit. This is probably the simplest sort of, I don't know what they call it, combinatorial digital circuit. It's how you sort of start learning digital, you know, addition and such things in like a class. Anyway, it was probably the first digital circuit I learned. So I'm going to give it two inputs. And I will connect one of the inputs to this XOR and AND. And I will connect the other one up to the XOR and AND as well. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to be two outputs. One is going to be the sum of the two inputs. And one is going to be the uh, carry bit. And we're adding binary numbers. So as a reminder, or if you've never seen it, 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 0 is 1, and that all worked like base 10. But in binary, if I say 1 plus 1, it's 1, 0, because it carried into the next place. So right now, 0 plus 0 is showing is 0 in the XOR gate output. I'm going to now take 0 plus 1, and it is 1 in the XOR output tells me the sum. And then 1, 0, again, it's 1 and 1 1 it's now 0 that's what exclusive or does it is true or 1 if both of the inputs if either of the inputs is 1 but if both of the inputs are 1 and 0 the and gate is then showing us a carry bit if i have 1 plus 1 so 1 plus 1 is if you think about it from left to right here 1 0 is the result. And uh, okay, I guess I'll call it quits there. I hope that was helpful to some people. Uh, let me know in the comments if I need to include some additional details. Thank you.